Hey everybody, welcome back. Uh, this is instructor Phil Dimitriotis. I just recorded like 15 minutes and realized that the dumb mic wasn't on. So now the mic's on and we're ready to go. So uh, we're going to be talking about, um, this is for my uh, Art 243 Applied Perspective course where we're learning basics about perspective, but most importantly we're applying them into creating worlds and environments, which is extremely important, okay? So um, what we're looking at here is our first assignment. We're um, actually, it's our second assignment working into two point. Our first one was in one point. And now I'm going through and showing students how to map out and build up a world in two point perspective. The assignment guidelines are to create a world with a warehouse or a factory inside it surrounded by residential neighborhoods. So there's a reason for that madness. And part of that is, is has a lot to do with understanding scale because the size relationships of buildings and excuse me, of houses are gonna be a lot smaller compared to warehouse buildings or factories. Um, it's a little bit more complicated to do that. The shape language is gonna be different on a house versus a factory or warehouse. And so the other thing is that, you know, when you look up reference, a lot of factories and warehouses, some of them are very squared off and we need to find a way to embellish upon them and make them a little bit more interesting inside the drawing phase. So, um, and then on top of that, we are applying perspective, and part of the perspective that we are applying is enforcing uh, the artist to understand the linear use of it, at the same time understanding basics of composing, some basics of design, like we mentioned before, shape language, and so on. So one of my students did this wonderful little thumbnail right here, and I, what I have is a collection of thumbnails from students here, and what I would like to do is go over and draw on top of them and tell you how to either finish them on, finish them off, um, something to add on, excuse me, that you might need to do, or a frame adjustment or whatever. So let's talk about this. In this particular case, what we have here from this particular student, uh, pros and cons. Uh, one of the pros, really nice angle, looks great. One of the things that's a little hard, as you noticed, uh, the student has, why am I, there's my line, what's going on? A little bit of lag there. The student has drawn um, the frame excuse me, the vanishing points are so close, we have a limited frame that we can put in the piece. So that right there is about the best frame that we could get, okay? And part of the reason is, as far as framing that up, is that our vanishing points are right here and they're right here. So they're really, really close. And because of that closeness, we have a limitation of what we can add into it. But despite that, the student who worked on this, Jacqueline, okay, you did a fantastic job. It reads very well. And all you got to do now is just match up the rest of your drawing to this frame and have it working even better. Okay, so what's cool about what you did pull off is that you shifted enough buildings so we're not getting this, this line up here accentuating right down the middle of the composition, which we talked about is really prone to happen with most artists that are starting or working the first time inside Two Point Perspective. Okay, so number one, in terms of the drawing and the draftsmanship, spot on, looks great, the perspective is looking well. Um, number two, the visual read here, this outside shape of all this right here, that reads very nicely, comes together quite wonderfully, gives us a nice focal point. Um, and I like these residential houses that you, you put here. They're working pretty good. So um, I really have sort of limited comments for you. Uh, the first thing I would talk about is adding in some streets and sidewalk to make it feel more city-like. And what we're going to do to do that, um, I actually left my ruler at home, so I'm using a piece of wood that was on the floor. Uh, good times, right? So uh, I'm going to come in here and start to sketch some of that. So when we see over here, with these little details that we're used to seeing might be driveways, it could be walkways, it could be curves. In fact, this could be all walkway. Um, there could be uh, a back area to this. There could be, depending on if that's like condos or houses, there could be a couple structures here you could park cars in here let's say if you wanted to so it's just these little details that start to add a little bit more for example coming down here if that's part of the street coming this way is there a sidewalk in here you know perhaps when we come back over here maybe there's a street sign there's something up over here maybe we have a little bit of a tree in the foreground and so on okay and that starts to add a little bit more detail inside my piece and make it feel more workable um, even maybe I throw a crosswalk in here like this and see it just helps anchors things down so a lot of times students draw a bunch of the buildings and then they leave out everything else empty and you can't do that you need to have these other little details that add to it for example look at your factory here in front of your factory if we put a line going across like that 
that could be like a little, you know, a dedicated curb for that property. Then there could be like right here, there could be more of a, uh, a walkway, you know, like a, a, a curve element going across. Then you could come into this and you might put, could be a little stop sign. There could be a street light over here. You could come over on this side, check your scale. I'm just gonna eyeball it real quick because I don't have a ruler with me. So I could have another light over there and just little details. I might even see the edge of my curve. So if I come in here and draw a line going across, I might see just a little bit of the edge of that curve. Now that edge of the curve is gonna hit this upper line here. So maybe I decide to drop this house line down a little bit to about there. So that way I don't have a tangency happening in my piece, okay? Oops, sorry. There, so I get this working in here and you see I've anchored it down and it really starts to work. So the other thing I wanted to talk about for the class is after you get these wonderful shapes in here and um, as I wanted to mention really quick, even though we're in two point perspective, we still have a dedicated feel happening in regards to uh, foreground, midground, and background. So foreground, midground, and background. So here's our foreground. There's another foreground. There's some good midground, and then we have some background right there. And then there's another background that I like to talk about. So since we have foreground, midground, and background, and they're already overlapping each other, that's quite fantastic because because there's a lot more depth being created inside the piece. Okay. So the other thing I like to refer to is either like what I call the background background or the sky background. So most artists forget we have this wonderful sky up in here. And you have to remember that our sky is still connected to some of our vanishing points. So um, that's an important thing to think about because the sky is still there and we can think of the sky as this dedicated grid that's working inside our piece. And remember, there are things we're gonna see inside a sky plane that's going to give us detail and perspective and indicate what's happening inside a world. So let's real quick, let's quickly talk about what a couple of those things might be that you might see up here once you're looking up in the sky. Number one, it could be telephone poles, you know, all depending upon the angle. So I drew this on another layer so I can drop it down a little bit. So it allows me to see this transition of what's happening there and then I could sort of turn it off, okay? All right, actually I made the mistake of drawing it. Good job, Phil. I put it on the same layer. So what I'm going to do is just leave it, turn it back up, and then I'm going to lightly erase it really quick. Too busy talking. And I'm going to lightly erase that grid so I can see it there and I know it's happening. I always draw these little grids because uh, it's really important for me to get a sense and feel of the scale. So number one of the, the number one things that we can add into a piece is going to make it feel great is going to be trees and bushes. So for example, on this edge of the factory, let's say I have more of a road over here, let's say, and then I come over here, I might have this large type of like oak or some other type of base tree, and there might be another one here next to it. There might be another one here like blending into this. So there, I have these large trees there. If I go for large tree there, I'm looking at the scale of that tree right now, right? So I'm um, looking at the scale of that tree, that tree right here is gonna be that tall. So I know back here, if I were to transfer that scale, that scale is gonna be about that big back there. So it's important for me to think about that because that is another element that I could change into my piece. So if I come back here where there's a couple other buildings, I could come in here and put another tree in the back like this and so. And, and by doing that, your eye sees the trees here in the foreground, they see the ones in the background and it immediately communicates some form of depth, okay? So that's one thing you could use. Another thing you could use might not really apply to this piece as much, but it could be light poles or telephone poles. So here, a lot of the midgrounds being covered, but imagine if you came in here, maybe like back here, you had what looks like a little telephone pole, and maybe there's running wires over to another one. Maybe there's another one over here, let's say, or something. You might get somewhere back in here, but it's just it's too tight, so we have too many tangencies right now. I could have another telephone pole back in there, so we see the scale change again. All right, so not, I'm just mentioning it to you, not that I would put the telephone poles in there, giving you an example of how it could work, okay? But another thing that I really like are clouds. And clouds are absolutely fantastic because we live on a planet that has um, lots of moisture. And so we tend to see lots of puffy clouds. And the mo there are th you know, three main types of, of clouds. You have your stratus clouds, your culeonimbus, which are like the white puffy ones. And then um, I think we said stratus, and then you have the long 
what are the name of the long and thin ones? Anyway, so what I like to do is I like sort of these puffy clouds because what I might do is I might come over like this in the foreground and I draw underneath my cloud. I draw the top to part of my cloud like this and then I get my cloud to fit in there. So two things I'm doing when I do that. Number one, I'm establishing underneath my cloud. Then I'm establishing that there's a side to my cloud. That's huge because all clouds have that type of feel to them. So I need to figure out how to commu communicate that in a linear fashion. The next thing that I want to do, right, is I'm going to come up to this. And if I look over here, maybe the clouds. Sorry, a little bit of drag time there. Does the recorder go on? Maybe their clouds get a little bit smaller sort of in the midground, okay? And then maybe in the back here, you know, maybe I have another thing I could do is mountain ranges. You can put a little bit of a mountain range or a hill going back there, right? There's all kinds of hills like that. Then once I get that hill in there, maybe way back above that hill, I now even have a little bit smaller clouds in there. See that? So clouds are another great way for us to really get a lot of depth inside our pieces. And one thing that I like doing with clouds is I love coming in. Um, I just have this thing I've done before in a couple studios where I do this sort of like little twist in there. And when I get that twist in there, it allows me to see the base of the cloud. And then maybe the cloud is a little bit larger as it comes towards me like this. And maybe there's a side to that cloud. See like that. And then maybe the cloud's twisting a little bit. You know, it's just, it's in space. It could be moving and it could be separating. And then I also like to overlap a little bit. So if I have a cloud there, maybe there's another little bit of a cloud behind it, sort of being overlapped a teeny bit. And maybe up here, I have another large cloud shape, and then I have a secondary smaller shape, maybe something very small back in there, right? So again, clouds, trees, bushes, all these elements come into play, and they allow us to create more depth. So just to go over that again, you know, I might come in here and I might put a couple of like tree shapes and elements, other organics that are in there. I might throw some type of a hill or mountain. What you want to be careful though, is if you throw in a mountain or a hill, keep it very simple and don't go in and like illustrate every single pine tree. Um, you got to remember, um, that's way back in the, in the background. We're going to see uh, more rough silhouette shapes for part of our, our world we're not gonna be seeing tons of little details. So if you put tons of detail in there, you're gonna kill part of your piece. Another thing I talked about in class for the detail like back in here is to put what we call parcels. A parcel is like a square lot like this. And you put some trees around it. Maybe it's a farming community. And you put a little bit of a bush around there, cross it off of the street and that feels normal. Cause that's how, you know, when you look up in a plane and you look down, that's what you tend to see. So if you have mountains, you have some parcels, you have some bushes and trees in there and it makes it feel a little bit more organic. You come in and maybe you throw a cloud or two overlapping. Maybe you have one there. Maybe you have one a little bit closer here. Maybe one here. And then when I get back here, they get a lot smaller and a little bit tinier, right? Now it starts to feel like it's working together. So again, it's, it's just wrapping the piece up and bringing it to a finished point, which is going to help you out quite a bit. Okay. All right. Nice work, Jacqueline. I just added a little bit to it. Okay. Let's close that. And let's jump over here. Okay, so this is another student's piece that was done. My main concern was this, is that number one, the VPs are way too close. They're there and they're there. So the downside of that is that anything else I want to draw to the left-hand side, I only have this amount of room to go to. And actually, it's not even that much. It's actually even smaller. I have from there to there to go to. So um, the, the good thing about that is that 90% of this drawing from here to here goes to this vanishing point, right? Right, so that's a good thing. So that means, come on, go back. That means, sorry, Photoshop's lagging because of the recorder. Um, that means that I don't have to change 90% of the drawing, but if I were to come over here, James, who did this piece, and I were to put that, uh, that VP over there, all that's really doing by moving that is it's changing the angle from that to that, see that? It's a very, very light change. It's really not that, and here it's even, less drastic where that sidewalk's only gonna go to about there. So I would change my recommendation to James. The other thing is, is that we were zoomed to and close to this, right? So we're looking into it, all we can see is the warehouse. So what we really need to do is this, James. You can keep this VP here. You need to draw your frame out to about here, let's say. And I'm gonna rough that in because I don't know exactly where it's gonna fit. Bring your frame out to about there. Now you have this ability to come in here and sketch and get your whole entire 
factory in itself. Do you see that? Now it could fit in there and it breathes. We can see the outside silhouette shape it's so much easier. Now I'm going to come back to my new vanishing point. What I'm going to do is I'm going to block in like a, a street here, a sidewalk, and then I might come over here. And, you know, one of the things that I like to do is I like to just throw down a rough grid because that grid allows me to see how things should be anchored down and how they should feel. So, for example, maybe over here there's a street that goes this way, and then if I come back to this other VP, maybe that street goes back here, and then maybe this street from this vanishing point comes like this. So now you can get this feel. I'm just going to draw this real quick. How, oops, how this could be sidewalk in here, right? I could come over here, and I could imagine that this is maybe somebody's grass right here, Maybe there's like a, a mailbox in the front here and part of the house. And then maybe here I have the basics of, of a garage. So I might have a garage that comes up here. I might have another fence wall that's going back here for a house in between. So I could start putting some what we call a dedicated foreground elements in there, right? So I can get that done. Now I go to the left side. Let's do the same thing. So maybe over here on the street, there's, you know, there's another fence up in here, right? And we get that fence and we come up here. And then maybe I have like a little two-story sort of house that's existing back up in here. Um, if I wanted to, maybe this is a tight little neighborhood and maybe the homes are a little bit closer. So there's a sidewalk here, maybe part of this zigzags back this way, and there's houses in between there and the factory. So I'm just going to now come in here and imagine, okay, there's maybe part of the fence. If I come up here. So something we're talking about in class, what size shapes for houses. Well, houses tend to be in about anywhere from three to seven dedicated shapes, you know, so they tend to look like something like this. That's going to feel like a house. Okay, so then maybe I put a little chimney on it. I come in here, I put some details, I bring the driveway out a little bit. Maybe that's part of sidewalk in here. Maybe I put a light up on the end, another light up there. I come back here and I, maybe I start to sketch another part of a, oops, a little bit smaller, another part of a house in the back there, behind it somewhere. So you see how it's coming together now, James? My factory can breathe. I have some foreground elements. And heck, I might even decide to bring this out even more. Maybe I have this like a cutway like this. I don't know. Maybe it does this. And then I decide to come in here and be like, hey, I want to put maybe this should be. Yeah, like that's pretty cool. What if this is the fence then up here? And then I bring another house and I put it here in the foreground like that. See that? There. So I'm always moving things around inside my piece and my drawing because I'm, I'm trying to get the best framed composition that's possible. So the difference is, is when students first start, they're not thinking about all this. And you're, you're usually medium close-ups. Uh, your subject matter and your scale is too large and you can't see what's happening. So now that I have some streets in there, look, th this could be like a driveway entrance. I could, you know, I might come in here. There might be like a tree. A lot of these buildings have trees or palm trees in front of them. Sorry, somebody's moving trash cans outside on the campus. So I might come over here in the back and... Wow, can you guys hear that? I don't know what that is. Someone's moving stuff out there. Anyway, I'm going to put trees in the back. I might have some silhouettes of some houses back here going in perspective. And then look, I could even add to this, boom, let's throw a hill in there. Here's a hill now. And then on my hill. I could come up here. I could have houses, as long as they're working in perspective and they look like little houses with little trees around them, okay? And if it helps you, throw a light grid on that hill going downward with a slope on it like that, and that allows you to see how that feels like a plane. So I get that in there, you know, maybe it's finish this up, another tree here, maybe another house element there, you know, just house comes up, goes to the side, a little bit here, maybe there's you know, a little bit of a road that comes this way, and maybe that road comes back and, like, disappears. And then the same thing. I have a sky plane up there, so I now I can come in think about putting clouds in my piece. So I might have some in the foreground, right, like so. And then I might have some a little bit smaller back here in the midground. Okay, and that's it, James. There's your piece. You have your factory. So it's still factory warehouse, which could also be, like, a public storage or whatever. And then you still have your neighborhood around it and your home's put in there. So all I did was take your piece, move a vanishing point over to the far left-hand side there so it fits. That allowed me to get all that other information in and I kept your other VP right there, VP2. I just moved VP1 over. Remember, VP1 only changed 
that part of the building because only that part of the structure was connected to it. Okay, so that would be my solution for that guy. All right, James, enjoy. All right, and um, here's another student. So one of my big, little, one of my little complaints I was having with some students is, as I told them, I said, where's your frame? Without your frame, you don't know how to compose. So you have to have a frame. And I know students that get like, well, I don't want to have a frame because I'm plotting my vanishing points and I'm figuring out. It doesn't matter. You have to understand, okay, I get it that there's a VP there. I get it that, where's this other one? It's somewhere way back here. Let's go back to about, actually, I, I could have, when I, I took a picture of this image with my phone, so it could be slightly crooked. I'm going to say the VP is about there. Okay, so. Um, rule number one for me right now is I need to frame this up because th this is why. If I put a frame there, I'm going to see all this extra information in there. So I have to be very careful. If I put trees and stuff in there, I could end up putting, okay, let me put this on another layer. If I have a ton of trees and foliage, maybe that's like a little park and whatever, all of a sudden I have all this detail in here, and now my eye goes to this detail and my eye is no longer going to the core read of the piece, which is, that silhouette shape and the design of the warehouse and the factory. So that's pivotal for me. So I like this. I'm just wondering, I was starting to think to myself, maybe the best place uh, to cap this off might actually be about right there. And then I might just have to come in here and just pretend there's another structure or a rooftop or something that's overlapping part of this. See that and bring this more to the foreground. Let's say maybe this one has a larger chimney whatever, maybe there's some other little weird thing here on it. Maybe I can see the rain gutters here or whatever. So I want to bring something into my foreground if I can to block that. Then I thought about just coming over here, going up, and then right about here going across. Okay, and probably, I, I don't know, I'd pr probably cap it about there, maybe even a little bit before. So even here would be fine to, to end it. And remember, residential. So these could pass for residential. They look like they could be Scottish or England-based homes. That's cool. That could pass. That's what they sort of look like. That's more of an apartment complex because it's three to four stories tall. So now it's just the surrounding details. You know, you got street information in here. You might have a tree or two. People don't realize how many trees grow everywhere. They think it's like it's when students draw a piece, they leave it empty like vampires live there. No, you got to have... Trees, got to have people, every country, they have sidewalks, they have little curves, they have, look, they have storage. People drive into storage, the boss has his own parking lot that's right there, you know, where he parks inside and parks his car. You know, on top of the roof, you have little air conditioning vents. You might come over here, there might be a little antenna and it comes down and then on this side, there's a little square box because it's where the, the junk for the elevator is stored. You just break these silhouettes a little bit. So I come over here, I might do sort of, the, that might be like a back street, in fact, this might feel like an alleyway. There's like a bunch of wood posts, and then I come up here, and then I might have more of this, like a base residential house. Maybe there's another house over here tying in. You see that? Now I'm just tying in some of these, and then again, I put some trees like in front of them a little bit, and then it's a little hard to see here, but imagine that then I have this other street in the back, you know, or another sidewalk. Heck, I could get in here and even get a little bit smaller and I could still indicate that there's maybe another house in the back there. Do you see all that? I can fit all that detail and information in there. And then now I've already filled up the piece. It's a lot more readable. It's working. And I just want to keep, this is a nice read in here. It's a little long where I'm like from here, that's cool. But then here to here, it's like, and then it takes me forever to get there. But I get there. So one of the thoughts that I had it was why not find a way to overlap another shape in there, for example. But if I came in here and I had some other building shape that ties in, I don't know, I'm just brainstorming this quickly. Maybe this comes down and I have like a pillar or two here. I like things in one, threes, and fives. Maybe a couple windows. Maybe that separates a little bit. Maybe there's like a couple of details. Maybe there's like a large, you know, giant metal door. Maybe there's something there. You know, what if I get this shape and there's another window up there? So maybe that ties into all of this and helps unify that. In fact, I like that so much, I just want to come here and go and cut that off because it brings it, it keeps everything focused in that core shape, and that's really not as important. In fact, those actually look like apartments in there in the back or like a seedy 
cheap motel like in a like in the Bay Area or in Chicago. So I might even take that out. Take that out and then I'd come back in here and then just, you know, where this ends, maybe there's a wall there, maybe there's some trees that separate it, a little bit of space, and then boom, I'd be right back in here visiting up part of my residential again. Another tree or two like that. And then same thing here. I might come in here, might throw another hill or mountain or something in here. You know, maybe there's a little bit of snow on it. Right? Maybe there's indication, a little bit of houses or some greenery. I don't know. I'm just, you just fill it up. You know, you just don't want to keep it all boring. Right? Maybe there's a parking lot in the back here, a couple trees in the back, a couple things here. And, you know, maybe there's another, back here, there's like another little house or something. And then maybe there's another building. Maybe it's part of a city that comes in here. So I get that. Maybe there's another building like right up in here say something like that whatever right there boom now i have something behind there so i have my residential i have all that you know and you're drawing some smoke in here which is cool you get your smoke look like it's billowing through keep the smoke simple though you don't want it to detract from the piece if you put too much detail and you do like every little clump of smoke then it's going to outweigh the piece you know you don't want it to do that maybe a little cloud in there right Sometimes clouds are even like this. The stratus ones are like long, spread out over the horizon, you know, and you can just leave them as like a white type of source. That's it. That's how I added that piece. You know, it went from sort of there, and it's the night of the living dead, meaning that like it's just empty. It's like it's a ghost town. And look, you put in bushes, you put trees, another little house, you overlap, bam, piece starts to come together. Okay, it starts to finish up. All right? All right, let's take a look at this one. So. This one was just a really rough sketch. And what I liked, I believe Andre did this. And what I liked about this is that even for a rough sketch, I really feel the student really did a fantastic job nailing down this, which is the visual read. Look at that. That's a beautiful, that's a gorgeous little visual read for a factory. That works quite well, Andre. So that's what caught my eye is that. And so when I see that as your teacher, I'm just like, well, dude, it's easy from there. Your VPs are far out. Now just add in the other stuff. And again, this is where my students struggle a little bit, where they come back and they're like, Phil, I drew the factory, but I can't figure out how to get, you know, how do I draw everything else in? And it's like, okay, just start. Here's how you start. Rule number one, when we have grids and we're drawing in worlds, it's a lot easier for beginners to start from the ground up. So if we come here, we draw a line where the part of this factory ends, we could draw like what might be a sidewalk or a walkway around it, come back to the other side. I sort of do the same thing like that, like this. I get this all fit together. Voila. Then I might come in here and, you know, who knows? Maybe there's a, a, a wall shipping, receiving. Maybe there's something here with a big roof on it. Maybe there's some trees in front of that to come down. You know, maybe back here there's like a little stop sign, you know, and maybe there's like a little another street sign I meant and a stop sign and then I come down here maybe this is part maybe that's maybe around this is like a brick wall that protects it so maybe the brick wall goes to here and then it goes oops let's say it goes to about here but maybe there's a big entrance gate right here right so there's an entrance gate that they would drive into to drop off chemicals you know and maybe part of that wall goes back this way it has a couple little pillars separating it maybe in the back here there's another tree by it so there that sort of encapsulate you know brings it all together wraps it up right so then i you know maybe i have off here boom there's a street okay i'm gonna have a street here now i'm gonna oops sorry a little bit of ruler slippage right there so now i'm gonna come back in here and oops now oh, come on photoshop i don't know why the touch screen's off and it still activates for some reason okay let me put it there. So now I'm going to come back over here and, you know, just build off of this. I mean, look, you could come here. There might be something. You might have a, a, a structure that's up in here, right? You could have a house that's going back over there. This might be separated. There might be walls or something over here between the two. There could be, you know, right here, like on sidewalks, right here, there could be a tree here in the foreground blocking some of this. So people walk by on the street here. You might come over here. Heck, you might decide to put another tree over there, maybe where that ends there. Maybe this is somebody's walkway here. Maybe there's a mailbox right in here, right, where they get their mail. 
So then right up in here, you can have the roots. And then I might have another tree overlapping part of that. See that? Get my tree in there. So I get part of my little residential elements. Now that I did that tree, I'm a little iffy on that tree because I'm like, well, it is blocking quite a bit. And what I don't like, it creates a symmetry right down there. So I'm going to take that tree out. So instead of that tree, maybe I just do this, put a block, maybe there, I don't know. It's just adding little things. Maybe there's a little newspaper stand, right? Here, maybe there's, yeah, maybe they're doing work and it's like, it's trying to feel like a trash can for a little bit. Large trash can, dumpster, trash outside, right, on the street. So maybe there's a little walkway that goes across from here to here on this side and then it would come over this way. And maybe we have another little structure here. Maybe there's a structure here. Maybe it's a different style house, right? Like that. We have something back here, and that's it. Now it's just all fill in. I mean, you could just, I felt like putting mountains in there. See, there's a lot of like house structures up here, and there's, you can see those hills sort of bending down, and you know, it could even be the opposite. It could be even like, big mountains like you ever been to like Park City Utah like these big giant mountains of snow and and you know trees and they're all around in the back I could be around part of it so it, it's it's just filling the composition so just continue to fill it what you don't want to do is leave it bare and empty so that's why I've told everyone in the class uh, grab a piece of tracing paper um, or if you're working you know sketch out another version and throw a layer on it and figure out how to keep your composition all together. Okay? All right. So there's another one. Okay? So I'm just adding to it, right? And look, I, I did this really quick. Yeah, I might come in here and go, you know, I didn't like that. I'm going to take that out. There's nothing wrong with that. You can do that. That's part of adding and subtracting. A lot of times I put stuff in and I realize, oh, you know, I might have put the, the same distance between here to here as I put between here to here. So that looks too similar. I want to take that out. Maybe I don't want a trash. Maybe I do want the trash can. Maybe I want more boxes. Maybe I want to look, you know, I mean, you just, you just got to go through the, the punches and figure out what's working, what's not working, you know? Oops. I was even wondering, maybe like here, there's, you know, there's just like a little, there's a car up here parked on the sidewalk, you know, just sitting here on the side. You know, maybe over here there's a big, drop-off area. Maybe they dropped off a bunch of boxes and stuff. Maybe there's a tree out in here with another tree and a little sign and all this other stuff. You just fill it up full of information. Make it look busy. Make it look used. But once again, here we are. We're at foreground. And this is a nice mid-ground. We're getting, we can have, we have tons of space back here. We can have like a little hill and we can have some background in there, a city or whatever. And then we put some skies in there and some clouds. A little bit of, you know, formations. That's it. We're done. Okay? All right. So we're finished with that guy. All right. Here's another one. Same exact thing. In fact, all of these are basically the same thing. So, John, Mr. Luce, this is another beautiful, simple, great read, right? I mean, let's look at the positives of it. Boom. It's right in here. Look at that. Simple. It's an easy read. So... Why not? You have this ability in this piece. Boom, frame it here. Put, take another bottom frame, go this way, come up to the top. There, you can see the silhouette. You're fine. You can come all the way out to here. Uh, your vanishing point is already going pretty much all the way off the page right there. See, there's about your horizon line. So look at that. So now you have this ability where, dude, you can you have a nice little view in here. We could see this. You can come in here and be smaller, and you could put in like little houses here. You can put some shrubbery. Maybe there's a side to that house there and the shrubbery between. We talked about this in my class about shrubberies between a lot of houses. Um, in California, at least, they have houses, uh, excuse me, the houses in between each other have either walls or they have trees. There's lots of greenery out here. So maybe here there's another little house structure here. I don't know, maybe this one's a little bit different. They have a long driveway, let's say. They have a couple trees behind it. You know, boom, there's your house over there. And then you come over here off your VP, throw your street in, boom, there's your street. Now you have this sidewalk. you got to fill that sidewalk with detail. Put whatever works, and then, boom, you come in here, you throw a mountain. Maybe there's, you know, another hill here, something back here. Maybe even back here, you can have houses. 
Remember, if you get up on the hill, the house is still applied in perspective. It just might be smaller if they're on that hill. So we can still see the side receding down to here, to that VP right there. We're going to see the sides going down like that back over there. So you might have some different houses in here, some little different structures, little trees, whatever, little details. So you can have that. You can totally have that. I've seen that. In fact, where I live, the city I live in, there have a bunch of hills in the city of, um, well, I can't say where it is. Let's say it's actually let's say city of Fullerton. And in the city of Fullerton, we have houses up on hills. And you see these little indentations for houses. And then you have like big hills like this where there might not be any type of, of house on there. It might just be a mountain in the back or a, a large dirt hill or a mound of whatever. Okay. So again, filling the composition, just not leaving it on one base. All right. Um, and last but not least, I thought this was a really wonderful piece. Um, my only concern with this this is Yudira. It's a really nice piece. It has a nice style to it. My only concern is that your structure sort of looks like a factory warehouse, but then it sort of doesn't. So what I was lightly sketching in class telling you to do is just come in here. It almost looks like we're like in Santa Monica or Santa Ana where you have like an art industrial area where you have like two-story warehouse buildings that people put like, um, you know, like the, the, they renovate and they live in and so on. It feels like more of that type of area. So we need to make this feel a little bit larger and in scale. So what I was thinking is, you know, what if you just, God, what if you found a way to come back over here and add on to the structure and put a roof that goes through part of this and then maybe that roof matches up so we see that it matches on each one of these, okay? Because this building over here it's just squared and that's just squared. And it's and the other thing too is, you notice that right there in terms of shape? It's like this is the same thickness as that and that's the same as that and that's the same as that and that's almost the same as that. And it's like, and that is the same as that. See that? Like five times repetitive. There it is, same thickness again. In fact, that's the same as that. And you're like, oh, okay, Phil, thanks. Okay, well, take it out. We don't need to have all that in. You wanna have a little bit more in there. So maybe you have a wide roof here, smaller roof, Maybe this becomes one, like this, and then put the smokestack in here. Maybe there's another tube or two with like a small to a large, and then maybe behind here there's another smokestack. Now there's a smokestack there. Now it looks like we have a place that makes DuPont tires out of rubber, and you know, and does that make sense? It's one large shape, it comes together. Bring a side to it off this way, put that same roof again that matches it up, then bring it down, then continue the garage over then put the garage in here and here like this. Now it feels like a much larger place. It feels like a factory that actually reminds me off the five freeway in California. There's a couple places that make like uh, iron doors and they make you know shoes and they make textiles. It looks like that type of uh, warehouse factory, much more dominant. So my other comment to you was your VP is about there. That house is fine. Maybe you bring this line back over this way, bring it out here, take your tree, move your tree back down into this foreground right here. And by doing that, now we're gonna do a little cheat here. Technically, your VP is landing right there. You see that? But that's okay. We can still make it work because we could draw a sidewalk right in here. Aha. And if we get sidewalk coming in there, that means you can have, you know, you could have a street that goes this way and then the street could go this way like this. Oops, my bad. Come on. Get ready, see, ready back to the VP like that so oops and now I hit the mic so now I can come in here and I could squeeze maybe a, a structure in here with some trees maybe another part of a structure in there and then maybe it turns and then this tree is sitting in the foreground connected to another house in fact maybe even over here I can put a parked car there's a little van or truck right here you know and you might have maybe that's just a walkway it's a bus pickup there's a little bench seat in the front there, right? And then you come over here and you have another car out here, right? Sitting in the front. So see that? Now it's coming together now a little bit more. Um, and check your scale. I just drew the cars in real quick. I'm looking at that trash can compared to the cars. And I'm like, man, that's huge. So my cars are probably off a little bit, which is fine. We'll make them larger. Be a lot larger. There. So let's say that's our car now. So you get the point. Cars tree in here get the hold on now that's bugging me come on Phil there. 
let's go back. So let's say this is still sidewalk in here, trees landing in there. And if that's your trash can, just double check that scale. Measure that back down to here. And that feels like it would probably be about right. So um, and come back here. And now if that trash can's that size, we're gonna have something probably with lights, you know, door, upper area. The car is gonna be more like this size, per se. It's gonna be a lot larger. Trash cans are about 30, 36 inches high. 36 inches high is about the front of a grill, depending if it's a base car, sedan, truck, or whatever. But now you can see that sketched in there. It's making a little bit more sense. So that was my comment you do on yours, is just pull it out, get that set down. And look, it already anchors. It still works. Composition's wonderful. We fixed the building. Throw a couple, like, wonderful little clouds in here. Get them a little bit smaller. Maybe back here, this separates by bushes. Then we get back here, and we see more residential. Maybe even you have another hill up here. A couple other bushes, more residential up there. And there it is. There's your little city area with car and your park. And, you know, the trash can's a nice element because it looks like trash day, and it's out in front of someone's house, right? You know? Maybe right here, put a little sidewalk, little crosswalk, excuse me, going across. Maybe where that pole is, bring the light back a little bit more so it doesn't quite hit. And then where that pole comes down, maybe you come in here and you put like a little little sign there or something. And you know what, maybe that triangle's hitting at a weird angle. So what if the, the pole goes the other way? So what if the pole's more, it has like a sign going that way. It says, you know, do not park or whatever. There, see that? It's a finished piece, done, looks nice, okay? And then, oh yeah. Let's finish the crosswalk. Maybe this crosswalk goes from there to there. Maybe it goes right there. Maybe there's another little sign here. Maybe there's a couple trash cans. Maybe a big trash container out there, right? I think I told you this felt like an entryway here. Maybe there's a gate here. It opens up for a little factory there and their trash outside. Just makes it feel used, makes it feel busy. It makes it sort of come alive. Okay, all right guys. That's the six samples that I went through. So now I know what to do. You gotta think about foreground, midground, background. We have to think about trees. We have to think about drawing from the ground up. We have a sky plane. We have a lot more to draw and design in. And, and definitely we have more overlap. So it's not just about the building and the visual read. It's about adding to it and finishing it all up. Have fun, talk to you later.